Pennsylvania is a prime target for Democrats in November, and Tuesday's primaries may have given the party some confidence. Two years after President Trump turned the state red, Democrats nominated seven women to run for the House of Representatives. Republicans nominated one. Sean Sullivan joins me now for more on Pennsylvania's elections and primaries in other states. He's a congressional reporter for The Washington Post. Sean, thanks for being with us. You report that Democrats turned out in high numbers in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. How did their turnout compare to Republicans? Well, uh, it, there are certainly some encouraging signs for Democrats who are looking at the November midterms and wondering, are they going to take back control of the House? When you look at the primaries last night in Pennsylvania, um, you know, you had high turnout basically across the board. You had turnout that was high among Democrats in Republican-controlled districts. You also had high turnout in places where they're playing defense. So right now it's pretty clear when you look not just at Pennsylvania but other states that have held primaries that energy is really, really high in the Democratic Party. A lot of that is driven by anger with President Trump. And they're eager to unseat these Republican members of Congress and replace them with Democrats. So Democratic strategists have a lot to be in uh, encouraged about when they look not only at Pennsylvania, but at a lot of other recent primaries and special elections across the country. Okay, so as of now, does it seem Democrats are poised to pick up some House seats in Pennsylvania? It definitely does look that way for a couple of reasons. I mean, number one, uh, the state Supreme Court redrew the congressional lines in Pennsylvania. And so now what you have is overall a congressional map that looks a lot more favorable to Democrats than uh, it did under the old map. And so right now you've got a situation where if it's a really good night for Democrats uh, in November, they could pick up as many as half a dozen seats in Pennsylvania. And of course, they need 23 total uh, to take back the House majority. So, you know, just looking at the raw numbers, I mean, if they pick up four or five seats even in Pennsylvania, um, that, that's a good chunk of the seats they need to take the majority. So really, Pennsylvania uh, is central to their plan to take back the House majority. And of course, this is a state that has sort of dramatically shifted in the last couple of years because Pennsylvania voted for President Trump in 2016, surprising a lot of people. You know, it had been almost 30 years since a Republican presidential candidate had won in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, but Trump did it. But since he won, it looks like things have been shifting back the other direction toward the Democrats. Now, speaking of President Trump, he certainly didn't shy away from the Republican Senate primary. His pick, Congressman Lou Barletta, won the nomination Tuesday. So does it seem like the president's support helped him? You know, it might have helped him with his base voters. Uh, but the question is, what effect is it going to have in the November midterms? And I think a lot of Democrats uh, and even some Republicans believe it's not going to be necessarily helpful uh, for Lou Barletta, because if you look at the tilt of this state, uh, the fact that it seems to be trending Democratic in the last couple of years, uh, having Trump you know, give you that stamp of approval might be more of a liability mm. than it could be a help. Uh, so we'll see in November, but Trump's certainly very enthusiastic about Lou Barletta. This is somebody who was a very early backer of Trump uh, when other Republicans were not so sure about him, were reluctant to get behind his candidacy. Uh, Barletta did, and so Trump is trying to reward him with his endorsement. But again, you know, it, it, it remains to be seen whether that endorsement is uh, helpful or harmful right. uh, when voters go to the polls in November. And again, he's up against Democratic Senator Bob Casey, of course, in November. Uh, is this going to be a tough re-election for Casey, or is it too hard to tell? You know, it, it, it's not going to be easy, but this is certainly not as difficult as some of the other races Democrats are looking at defending. Pennsylvania is one of 10 states that Trump won in 2016, where you have a Democratic senator on the ballot. And so, you know, this could be a competitive race, but Democrats are far more worried about places like West Virginia, North Dakota, Indiana, Montana, places where Trump won. You know, he didn't just win, he won by a very, very wide margin. And so Casey is in a better position than a lot of his Democratic colleagues. Um, but I think Democrats are not taking anything for granted, and Republicans haven't given up the possibility that they might be able to win this race. But no doubt, it, it's a long shot for sure. uh, for Bartletta. And of course, you mentioned some of the other states. Pennsylvania wasn't the only state with primaries Tuesday. There were also races in Nebraska, Idaho, and Oregon. Did the results from other races give an insight into what voters are looking for in November? 
Yeah, you know, in some of these races that we look at in these four states, we're seeing one trend uh, emerging, and we've seen this in some other races too, which is that there's still an appetite among voters in both parties for political outsiders, for newcomers, um, for sort of a shakeup. We saw this in Pennsylvania in the Democratic primary for lieutenant governor, where the incumbent uh, was voted out, and um, you know people wanted to see uh, a fresh face, somebody mm -hmm. new who might come in. Uh, in Idaho, Democrats nominated uh, a candidate who, uh, if she does win in November, would be the first uh, Native American governor, who's somebody who's you know defeated a candidate who had run for governor before. Uh, we saw it, you know, in Indiana on the Republican side, an earlier primary where Republicans went with an outsider and a businessman rather than members of Congress. So I think one thing we're seeing is that, you know, voters in both parties are saying, look, we want a fresh face. We don't really like candidates that are the traditional candidates who have long resumes in government. They're still hungry for somebody who has an outsider uh, resume and can sort of run as somebody who's not of the establishment. Still looking to shake things up. All right, Sean Sullivan in Washington. Thank you.